I always escaped, and this is probably one of the most frustrating grinds I have ever been through. This is the AMX AC46. And I'm really not a huge fan of this tank. It's got some really good plus points to it. But it's got some really big weak points to it as well. Every tank has that combination. The problem and the frustration with this tank is those weak points really overpower the strong points. The biggest weak point, the size on that cupola and rangefinder on top of the tank. It is bloody enormous. The armour is ridiculously unreliable. And it's massive. The tank is huge. But it's very mobile for such a big tank. It has a good gun arc and it has 10 degrees of gun depression with a very nasty bite on that gun. But I can hands down say I was very happy to sell this tank. I pushed it to 100 games and as soon as I hit 100 games I sold it. Now <laughs> I thought I'd have a look at what B stars to have a look how I did in said tank. And I don't know how but somehow I'm ranked 4th in the EU in this tank and that only means one thing in my book. Nobody wants to drive this tank, or if they do, they're rushing through it as quick as they can. And from a personal standpoint, this footage was recorded a while ago, but it was just, it's not an overly exciting tank to play. Now, as I mentioned earlier, every tank has pros and cons, this has some pretty frustrating cons, but there are things you can do to slightly inhibit them, and it does have some good points, and the good point on the French tank destroyers, quite simply, is the gun. With a gun rammer fitted to this, and in all the replays you see the only bit of equipment I have fitted is the gun rammer, that gun rammer pushes your DPM up to 2800. Other than that, it's got good penetration, and it's that 10 degrees of gun depression which I think is the most important thing on this tank. Unless someone shoots your gun mantlets when you're on the flat, they're going to penetrate. But if you're using that full degrees of full degrees, <laughs> if you're using that full 10 degrees of gun depression, it really does add to the effective thickness of this tank. And that's where you can get this arm to start to produce bounces. Oh yeah, and it's quite big and it's quite heavy, so it can be quite fun for ramming. On the flat, not using your gun depression, people are going to penetrate you. When you're using that 10 degrees of gun depression, you make those rangefinders a little bit harder to shoot at and you vast, vastly increase the thickness of that front armour. So if you're hating this tank and you're trying to get through it as quick as you can while not having sucky stats, the best thing you can do is use the gun depression everywhere you possibly can. I've got some replays in this video which give you a perfect example of what I mean, and this is one of them. Now before we carry on, there is one thing I need to note. This is the first guide, review, whatever you want to call these videos, which I've put up and I haven't at a garage part first. The reason being, as soon as I hit 100 battles, I sold this tank. And then straight afterwards I went, oh, I haven't actually <laughs> recorded the garage bit of how I set mine up. Now yeah, I could go into my test account or contributor account and use and make one in there. But I don't like using those accounts unless I am re previewing a tank, basically, which, well, isn't even out in the game yet. Other than that, you'll see every guide or review I do on a tank, 99% of them will be in my actual garage. I think it's more important that you see them in my actual garage. You know I've had to go through the grind just like you guys. And I have. I've grinded every single tank in the tech trees. I'm even sad enough to have premium tanks in my garage with zero battles on them because I just haven't played them yet. And yeah, I do use the contributor account from time to time to test certain tanks. Or if somebody, or I've had lots of you say, hey, please do one on this, I've used it for things like that. Especially if I haven't got the tank anymore because I've sold it. That's the occasions I would use it. Other than that, I don't usually use it that much. And I think. I've been a contributor for like two years, might be a bit less, and I have less than a couple of hundred battles in my contributor account. That's by the by from this tank though. 
best recommendation I can make when you're grinding this line out get the guns first this tank is all about the guns and even with the bad mobility it's frustrating but even with the good mobility it's frustrating get the guns the guns make all the difference and here is a lovely example of what I mean by using the gun depression to the best of your abilities I'm trying to hide that left hand cupola or rangefinder on the sides of the cupola and I'm using the full gun de gun depression I'm popping up the ridge I'm hiding my inner left and I'm basically just coming up whenever I'm reloaded taking a shot and then backing up and as you can see that's produced a fair amount of bounces and that's literally the best thing to do with this tank and I don't want to call it a one-trick pony but unless you're in that scenario trying to hide the left hand side using the gun depression it's not overly reliable so I literally drove this tank the entire time going gun depression gun depression try and use your gun depression gun depression and you're not always going to be in situations where you can use it however if you find a ridge anything just use it to the best of your abilities because it just increases the armor thickness on the front or the effective thickness now that is all well and good but it kind of leads to a slightly frustrating situation when you get to the next tank the AC-48. Now, I drove this tank with this 10 degrees of gun depression going, gun depression, use the gun depression, try and use the gun depression. And then I got to the next tank, which has 6 degrees of gun depression, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> How am I meant to increase the thickness on this? And the straight answer is, is by doing the same thing, but obviously you can't shoot back in that circumstance. But I'll go into that in further depth when we do an AC-48 video. This is what I want to talk about, this tank. And before I forget, let me actually just give you my garage loadout. As I said, I only run the gun rammer on this, and personally, I would recommend you only run a gun rammer and get to this as quick as you can. If this tank is a keeper to you, well, respect to you guys, but I wouldn't be wasting spare parts on this. But yeah, I run a repair kit, a multi-restoration pack, and adrenaline. I run the two fuels. No, I don't. I'm lying. I run the two foods and the one on 10% fuel. I'm running 8 HE and 8 APCR. Reason being, is you don't need a huge amount of APCR. You've got 202 penetration on this gun, which is a very respectable number. Couple that with 310 alpha rate of fire of 9.13 with your like I said with your gun rammer anyway and it makes this tank quite nasty or makes the gun nasty anyway and as I mentioned right at the start the only thing I think this has going for it is the gun it, yeah the mobility is not too bad but you can get a J Panther with uh, good mobility and a good gun and it just feels more reliable and when you get shot in a J-Panther you know it's going to penetrate with this it's hit and miss on paper this looks better than a J-Panther but I would genuinely pick a J-Panther over this every single day um oh one other thing I haven't noted actually aiming arc now the gun arc on this thing actually only has seven degrees left and ten degrees right it's only three degrees but it is worth bearing in mind because sometimes you can catch yourself out by forgetting about that just to give you a comparative the uh, j panther has 13 degrees either side seven and ten on this it's not a great deal really is it don't get me wrong you got things like the stero meal which has even worse but do you know what? <laughs> I prefer to stir a meal to this thing. Only because I knew if someone shot me in a stir a meal, or I get circled, I'm going to get wrecked. I just found this frustratingly unreliable. And even more important, and this is the most important thing, I won't usually free XP and skip an entire tank from standard all the way up to elited. So for me, this was the most frustrating stock grind going. That was until I bought the AC-48 anyway. The stock grind on the AC-48 is horrendous. But this is a very, very frustrating stock grind. 
when you're fully equipped and you're elite it's not as bad it's just frustrating at that point but yeah brace yourself if you haven't grinded this tank yet for the stock grind if you could free up some free xp it's worth using it on this tank to get it from stock to elite I would personally recommend that anyway I wish I did it in all honesty anyway I digress it's more opinions than facts it's just my opinion that this is a very frustrating tank to grind onto the gameplay I haven't really mentioned a lot other than just talking nonsense I've mentioned the gun depression I've mentioned how I equip this thing the other thing I try to do I play it quite aggressively and you'll notice if I can't use the gun depression I will try and hide that left cupola behind a building and angle it to the left or the right because if you can't use gun depression the other way of making the effective thickness go up obviously is turning the tank to the side turn it to the side when you haven't got cover and someone's going to shoot you in your side so from that perspective yeah try and hide that left hand side behind a building and angle up to the side now the other thing I like to do with this thing is play it quite aggressively and the reason for that is because when you're constantly on the move it's hard to hit the weak point on top couple that with the fact of when you're on the move there's more chance of them shooting and accidentally catching the mantlet on this thing which more often than not will always bounce when it hits the mantlet those things combined just give you that extra little bit you need to try and make the armor that bit more reliable and you've got a good gun so you want to keep that gun in play for as long as you can in the battle whether that be well if you're sitting at the back constantly with nothing to shoot at because you're too scared of getting penetrated you're not going to do a great deal for the team and when your team sorry when you get rushed by the enemy team then you're going to get nailed if you're doing as much as you can while your team's alive you're less of a target because there are more tanks to shoot at than just you you can keep your gun effective and you can be useful to your team you'll see I'm trying to play the ridge did that penetrate no there you are it didn't penetrate but it knocks my gun out but I'm trying to make sure even if I am at range I'm playing this thing constantly trying to keep the gun in use there now I've lost the opportunity to shoot back at things there I'm going to make a push because as I mentioned above all else that's what matters is keeping your gun firing as often as you can as long as you can while your team are alive because once you're a sole target with unreliable armor it's hard to stay alive with several tanks shooting at you if they're all really really low health one shots bonus if they're not you can't realistically guarantee that you can angle yourself perfectly to bounce a shot because even if you did angle yourself perfectly you still have that rangefinder on top so carrying this thing reliably realistically needs to be done while your team are alive obviously there are other things which can be done as well there's a mistake made on my behalf here there's a dune right behind me which I could have used to try and increase the effective thickness of my armor I should have used that if I use that it would have given me more chance of surviving but I didn't so again I forgot my own golden rule of gun depression but it was still a mastery and it was still a good game we did 4126 damage and we are way at the top of the board there in fact we had two zeros I don't know why we had two zeros but we did it could have been wiped out right from the start it could have been afk i genuinely don't know i would have liked that to be a win it wasn't a win but it was still a good game and it was an exciting fun game to play but there were mistakes made specifically i didn't follow my golden rule of gun depression and that's my golden rule like i said i drive this thing going must use gun depression must use gun depression <laughs> and i didn't and i paid the price for that one not saying that using the gun depression would have guaranteed me win that quite the opposite I still have that damn rangefinder on top but it would have increased the odds and that's exactly why we play certain tanks a certain way side scraping an E100 doesn't guarantee you're going to bounce every shot but I tell you what it certainly increases the chances and everything we can do to increase the chances is a bonus 
Also, camping bush at the start of the match. That's a very good way of increasing the chances. I'm completely unspotted, and I have some lovely shots downrange on these tanks, which pretty much is the safest way to play this tank as a support tank. Personally, I find it a little bit boring to sit as support the entire time. But as long as you've got shots, use it. Take advantage of the fact that you have those long range shots down the line to strengthen your chance before you go running in. Now, as I mentioned, I play this tank quite aggressively. However, you'll see in this circumstance, I'm trying to hold off playing aggressively at the start, get some shots down the line to weaken the enemy, then I'll go and make my push. That's kind of the optimal situation for this tank. You are using its amazing gun to your advantage while not being a target in any shape or form whatsoever. And you can pull shots like that off. But if you don't have the shots to shoot at anything, don't hang around much longer as I'm not here because you're wasting your gun and you won't be of use to your team. Which is why I can see my team are pushing on the right. There's two reds straight ahead. I'm going to push the left. And hopefully I can pincer those two tanks in. I wasn't expecting the T-71 to appear there. So I'm going to try and deal with him. If he runs off, bonus, I can keep pushing these tanks on the right. If he doesn't, we have to address him before we can come down this way. And again, you'll see there, I'm not in a situation to use my gun depression. However, I'm turning my tank to the side trying to increase the armor effective thickness. And now at the moment, the T-71 isn't going anywhere, so we are going to try to get some shots off. And I dunked that shot into the building, and the T-71 has decided to come out and shoot something else, which means I can put a shot on him, which I will now push forward on these tanks. I'm using the HE, I've used all my HE actually, and so I'm going to go ram him, because, as I mentioned, it's a heavy, fast tank and when you're in a tank which you find unreliable you need to take advantage of every single opportunity you can all in all it's a tank which I would personally recommend just getting through the grind as quick as you can it hasn't been for me a tank which I would keep and it is just my opinion there are going to be people who say no this thing's fantastic for me I just didn't enjoy this tank and I was quite happy to sell it I hope, though, that some of the information from this video has been of use to you if you're about to start this grind or you're going through this grind and did what I did and gone, ah, I can't be bothered to do this at the moment. It's too frustrating. But hang in there. You can get into the next tank, get into the next tier, and work your way up. I'd like to say it's worth it to push your way through the tiers. I'm not too sure at the moment. I will let you know in future videos what I personally think. Again, my personal opinion. But if you're like me and you just want to get every single tank in the game, obviously you've got to go through this grind. Either way, guys, I hope you pulled something out of this video which you found of use in terms of grinding this tank. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.